Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, I want to welcome all of you back this morning. Bishop is on the line with us. Brother uh, Kings is with us from London, Sister Uche from Nigeria, and other people around the nation. They are joining us from Maryland, all the way to California, and all over the country. I want to thank every one of you this morning for joining us. So we hear the hour with the Lord and to participate in this special hour that Jesus himself created some 2,000 years ago in the Garden of Gethsemane when he told his disciples, why don't you spend an hour with me? It's very good to spend an hour with the Lord. When you spend time with the Lord, there's a great reward that comes from spending time with the Lord. May God bless us as we look into his word this morning in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Brothers and sisters, we are going to be looking at James, the book of James, the book of James chapter 2, we are going to be reading from King, the book of James chapter 2, our topic is practical Christianity, applying James chapter 2 to everyday life, implication for modern day Christian. Welcome. Let us explore James chapter 2, verses 1 to 26, and address the relationship between faith and works, particularly emphasizing the practical outworking of genuine faith in the lives of believers. Let us break down the passage by by verse with analysis and implication for modern day Christians. Verse 1 My brothers and sisters, believers in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ, must not show favoritism. As Christians, we are not supposed to show favoritism. Analysis James starts by addressing believers directly, highlighting the importance of not showing favoritism based on external factors such as wealth or social status. It challenges the notion that social status should not influence how Christians treat other Christians or people in life. Implication for modern day Christian. In today's world, where social status, wealth, and privilege often dictate treatment, James reminds Christians that all people are equally valuable in God's eyes. Christians are called to treat everyone with dignity and respect, regardless of their social economic status. As Christians, we have the obligation to make sure we respect people, no matter their position in life, the clothes they are wearing, the education they have, the status they have in life, the political or religious position they hold. We're supposed to treat them equally. Verses 2 to 4. Suppose a man comes into your meeting wearing a golden ring and fine clothes, and a poor man in filthy, dirty old clothes also come in. If you show special attention to the man wearing fine clothes and say, <clears throat> here is a good seat for you, but say to the poor man, you stand there or sit on the floor by my feet. Have you not discriminated against or among yourself? and become judges of evil thoughts. Analysis. James illustrated that. James illustrated his point with hypothetical scenario. He condemns the practice of showing preferential treatment to the wealthy while disregarding or demeaning the poor. Such action contradicts Christian principle of equality and love. You know, as a Christian, we may not know <coughs> what we, we, we practice discrimination in a way. When we see a man with a nice car, a man with a nice title, a man with a good suit, golden apparel and everything, what do we do? Oh, brother, come. You're welcome. Come and sit right here. Sister, oh, sister, come and sit right here. Come and sit right here. You put that sister in a gorgeous Lovely place. When you see a poor man, come out here, come out here, come, come out, what are you doing there? Come out here. 
you're disturbing us. Why are you sitting down here? Why should you sit down here? Go and sit over here. Because this man looked poor. We are treating him based on the material he has. But he's not seen as Christian. We shouldn't do that one. Implication for modern day Christians. Modern Christians should examine their attitude towards others, ensuring they do not prioritize the weight or influential love over the poor and marginalized. The challenges they challenge Christians to cultivate a mindset of humility and compassion, treating all people with fairness and kindness. You know, as Christians, we are supposed to show love to everybody. But in actual fact, to be very to be very frank, to be very honest, to be very sincere, we don't practice that. If you want to know, go to a, a social gathering. You see a brother or sister who dress very well, or who come with a very nice expensive car, put on very nice suits with a nice perfume. And that brother come in. This brother is more or less homeless. He does, he's living in the homeless shelter. What do we do? May we see the brother? Come, please, come on. Come, eh, 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 say that man away from me. Please. Tell him to live here. What is he doing? <laughs> because the man is poor. But the eyes of God is not poor. Verse 5. Listen, my dear brothers and sisters, has no God Choosing those who are poor in the eyes of the world to be rich in faith and to inherit the kingdom he promised to those who love him. And now listen, James showed at James draw attention to God's perspective on wealth and poverty. He highlighted that God often chooses those who are considered poor in worldly terms to be spiritually rich and heir of his kingdom. This challenge social norms and value. You know, as Christians, what do we do? We look at the poor people. We marginalize them. We beat them down. We have no respect for them. Implication for modern day Christians. This verse encourages Christians to, to value spiritual riches over material wealth. It promotes believers to see beyond social economic status and recognize the potential for profound faith and spiritual inheritance among the poor and marginalized. As I always say, when you look at Jesus' disciples, they were not rich. You know, if Jesus' disciples were to come today or Jesus was to come back to the earth today, we would not welcome into our midst. We will not come into our church. Why? Because he's a poor man. Because he may not dress very well. He doesn't ride a very expensive car. He doesn't wear expensive clothes. What do we do? We, we look down upon him. Majority of the churches today, to be very frank, a lot of them are not respecting people without money. Especially people that where they talk about money. Those of you that want to give ten thousand dollars. Come on this way. Go to this side. Those of you that want to give one thousand dollars, go this way. Those of you that want to give five hundred, go this way. Those of you that have nothing to give, come this way. And the brother have nothing to give. Hey, leave there, brother. Please come over that place. I say, leave there. Let that brother sit down. I'm telling you to leave there. What are you doing? <laughs> because <laughs> the brother have nothing to show. He's a poor man. But then the one that is rich. Ah, brother, come and sit down here. You want to give 10,000, 100,000 a year? Come and sit down here. Let the brother sit down here. You didn't go and put him in front of the altar with one of the most expensive seats because that brother she has money. Who is deceiving who? May God help us in Jesus' name. Brothers and sisters, we have to be very careful that we are not letting the material things of this world influence us. We may not believe it, what we are doing. We are having judges, we are partial in how we treat people because that brother is poor. Verses 6 to 7. But you have dishonored the poor. Is it not the rich 
who are exploiting you? Are they not the ones who are dragging you into court? Are they not the ones who are blaspheming the noble name of him to whom you belong, the noble name of Jesus Christ? And now they say, James rebuked the church for dishonoring the poor while parasitically seeking favor with the wealthy. He pointed out that the irony that the wealthy often oppress the believers, demonstrating that wealth does not equate to godliness or righteousness. Because the brother is rich or because the sister is rich doesn't mean there's no God. When the brother has money, the sister has money, we respect him. <clears throat> we don't even care if the money was stolen. We don't even care where he got the money. As long as the brother look rich, the sister look rich, oh yes, we, we honor them. Who is deceiving who? We not think that brother is rich, he must be a godly man. No. Riches do not equate godliness. We have to be very careful. They are not being deceived by fleeting things. Things without lasting value. We have to be very careful. Because this world is not our whole. It is very sad that all these politicians, they are stealing our money. I, a brother, I think Brother King, sent me a video from England. A man, a politician in Nigeria, stole 69 billion dollars. 69 billion dollars. And he put it in Texas Bank. One of the bankers in this Texas Bank, one of the banks in Texas, report to Nigeria official and say, this money is here. All that you can need to do is to request for the money and show evidence that this guy not got his money through honest me. He said this other man has 80, 80 S-class Mercedes, 80, not 8, 80 with bulletproof. This man, they find trillions of dollars in their house. What are they doing with it? Who is this? They, oh, they go to the church, they are Christian, they are pastor, they are sister pastor, they are this, they are that. Who is this? They, oh. And those people have been worshipped. He said, that 69 billion that Trump would have transformed Nigeria economy around 69 billion dollars. That's a lot of money. But what happened? Because they are stealing this money. We are honored that we are given a chief title. We are given a big title, but they are going to help fire because the money they have gotten is called ill-gotten money, and God does not God does not like it. Who is deceiving who? Because it was in Jesus' name. As I say every day, this world is not our home. We are going to leave this world one day, and we are going to stand before the Maker, the owner of this world. And it's going to ask us, how do we spend our life? And what, what do we do? What do we have? How do we use to better the life of others? They go help us in Jesus' name. Implication for modern day Christians. Modern Christians are cautioned against placing undue trust in the worldly or powerful. Those who are worthy, how we trust them, how we respect them, how we honor them. Instead, they should prioritize justice and Integrity, advocating for the marginalized, standing against exploitation, even if it comes from the influential individual or groups. I don't care who is cheating who. Any person that says the money is a thief. Because it in Jesus' name. Verse 8. If you really keep the royal law found in the scripture, love your neighbor as yourself you are doing right. If you love your neighbor as yourself, you will not steal their money. You will not cheat them. You will not abuse them. You will not marginalize them. May God help us in Jesus' name. And now listen, James referenced the commandment to love one's neighbor and for that, treating others with equality and respect fulfill the royal law. Love is a guiding principle that should govern all relationships and action within the Christian community.
community. Love, love. But you know what is going on today? There is no love in the world today. Because there is kidnapping, there is cheating, there is robbery. If you within the church. And those who are poor, if a, if a man say one tube of yam or half loaf of bread, they will be that man to death. But the man has sold 69 billion dollars. The man is giving honorary title. Who is the civil who? And this is what I executed the justice or uh, putting this poor man to death. They are all going to the church. And some of them are stealing from the government treasury. And they are giving it to their pastor. Who know their thieves? Who are taking the money? They go ahead and Jesus' name. Implication of modern day Christian. This verse underscores the centrality of law in the Christian ethics. Modern Christians are reminded that their faith should be demonstrated through loving actions towards others, regardless of differences in status, wealth, or background. That includes academics. It doesn't matter if the person can speak English, if the person can write, it doesn't matter their position in life. As a Christian, we need to respect all people. As I said, it's very hard to do because we give preference to those who are rich. Well, not necessarily those who think they are rich. You know, the type of person who likes to watch people from afar off. So now you just like to watch social media. I see the way people dress. They want to shoot to you, they are rich. But in actual fact, they are very poor. But because you are not showing off like them, they feel you are poor. And I look at them and laugh. I say, Who is deceiving who? May God help us in Jesus' name. Verse 14. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith, but how no deed can faith save them? And now listen. James directly addressed the relationship between faith and works. He questioned the authenticity of a faith that does not produce corresponding actions. True faith, according to James, is evidenced by practical deeds of love and obedience. If you are true a Christian, you actually see your brother is in need, you have the means to assist them, you have to help that poor brother or sister. You know what I always say? You don't have to be poor to help somebody. Or you don't have to be rich to help somebody. It just what's in your heart. You know, if you give somebody a cold cup of water, you know, according to the economic utility of benefit, when the water is very hot, extremely very hot, very hot, and you are tasting, and this brother turn around, and give you cold water. That water has a lot of utility, have value. But when you already feel now, somebody gave you one gallon of water, you have no value. So as Christians, it's not how much we give that matter. It's from our heart. Do we see the need of the poor, the orphan, the widows? Sometimes when I send gifts to people, just little. The prayer they send, I'm saying, this prayer is more than this money. This prayer, it is more than the, the, the money. Because that money has economic utility as the time the money was given. Implication for modern day Christians. Modern Christians are challenged to examine their own faith. Authentic faith should manifest in tangible acts of compassion, justice, and service to West others, mere profession of belief without corresponding action is insufficient. Verse 17 In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. Analysis James reinforces his point that genuine faith must be active and productive. Faith that does not translate into action is described as dead, lacking the virtual signs of true 
spiritual life. Implication for modern day Christians. This verse urges modern Christians to live out their faith actively in their daily lives. It calls for a faith that is vibrant, dynamic, transformative, imparting both the believers and the world around them. As Christians, we need to make sure our faith is active, our faith is vibrant, our faith is alive. By the things we do, it's not by what we say. As Christians, what are we saying? Do people know you are a Christian? By love, shall men know we are Christ's disciples? By love. It's not how much you give. It's not how much you give. You know, as a pastor, some people will give me like, literally two dollars, say, Pastor, so it's all I have. I say, two dollars? You are begging me that that's all you have? I say, two dollars, I say, yes. I say, that's a lot of money to me. There are no dollars that tell you to give. If you are giving, you are giving from a pure heart of love. You know, Jesus Christ never talk about offering the Bible if you read the Bible. But one day Jesus Christ was in the church. He went to the church. He stayed in the front of the church where they were giving the offering. He was watching everybody. Everybody was coming with their big offering money. In actual they were dragging it with a cart or a big bag. It was so big that they dumped it there. This poor widow. The woman came, she was shaking. She was shaking to give this money. He was hiding it. He didn't want anybody to see. He was looking at the right, he was looking at the left. Because the church had the need. They were asking for money for a project. This woman looked at him. And Jesus Christ was looking at this poor old lady, widow. She doesn't have a husband. And Jesus Christ was looking at her. She was trying to make sure Jesus Christ's eyes don't catch her eyes. She was trying to avoid looking at Jesus Christ's eyes. And she took this money. She was looking at the back to make sure nobody was watching her. She quickly took this money there. And after she left, she went and sat down. When they left there, I love Jesus. He always called what they call debriefing. You know the military term? After you have gone for operation, you call debriefing. Those who are in the military probably don't understand what I'm talking about. They pray for him. Let us see what happened. What we learned. What, what was the mistake we had? How can we improve our pressure next time? During this debriefing, Jesus Christ told his disciples, He said, Who gave the highest money today? He was asking his disciples. He said, Who gave the highest? You know, our brother, Peter, he's the junior brother to James. He said, uh, I know who gives him. I'll give, he raised up his hand. Jesus Christ said, put down your hand, not you. Let somebody else talk. He said, no, no, no. I want to talk. I want to talk. That man that came with a big bag of money, that was the one that gave the biggest money. Jesus Christ said, okay, thank you very much. Wrong answer. Any other person have any other answer to give? Any other suggestion? Any other to give? They will say, he said, who gives the highest money to me? This, when you, you guys are in the church, what do you observe? The disciples say, well, if Peter does not know how to talk very well, give the answer. That's what I was thinking. I was thinking the man that came with a big bag of money. Jesus Christ said, no. Is the one that gave the two pennies, two half pennies. Eh? It's, it's not the way you and I look at things that come look at it. That was very careful. How we praise people, how we look down people. Because as I was that brother is very rich. Oh, I remember those days from as a Mr. God. When we want to give money, people would come to the altar and they were announced, Brother Susu is giving 100,000. I don't know how much this brother had. I can't compare myself with him, I don't know what he's doing. And look at people actually clearly coming, making vow that were never fulfilled to do. Till today, never fulfilled those vows. I never want to make a vow. I never give, I never make any vow. People say give, I say no, I don't have money. I'm not going to give what I don't have. I don't make any vow. Bible say, do not make any vow you cannot fulfill. If you do it, God is going to destroy the work of your hand. 
He said, oh, don't be, don't be harsh, don't be rash in talking. Quick, quick. Hey, yeah, I'll give, I'll give. Don't let anybody drag you into giving. God does not bless such giving. You must give from your heart. The little one you have, even if it's only one naira or half of one naira, if there's anything like that, or a few covers, if it's from a generous your heart, Jesus said that widow was the one that gave the higher. That is what is called love. If you see a man, God can talk to your heart truly. God will talk to me. He said, send money to two person from nowhere. I'll send money to them. The person will say, when I receive that money, it came at the right time. They never call me, they never write to me. Maybe they are praying. You know, you just say, send money to that person. I will tell my wife, who you only handle the money. I say, go ahead and send the money to social person. I don't touch money, I don't handle money. My wife is the one that actually do all the, all the money transfer. All the money we give to the ministry. I say, I am called to preach the gospel. I am not called to serve the table. So, you find that those people will be so, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I can't believe it. Oh, it came up. They will be praying. I say, the prayer is more than the money. So, love is very, very important. We should never commonize anybody because they have no money. The little one they have, it may be big in the eyes of God. You know, it's, money is not the only thing. Somebody could pray for you. Those four people are the ones that have the dynamic power of prayer. When they actually pray for you, God will answer you. Maybe you are at work, God said, God bless you for what you have done. That's a true prayer. So you find that as a Christian, we have to be very careful that we're not giving the impression that we are rich for people to honor us. No one will go outside. I watch it when I just dress casually, people want to look at me. I have so many clothes, you can't believe it. All these native clothes. I have bosses of bosses of bosses of native clothes. Where do I wear them to? Every time they are listening, one or the other one to me, they are sending and saying, I'm saying, this is a waste of money. But that's all right. They send it, but where do I wear them to? Brothers and sisters, we have to be very careful that we're not being influenced by material things. This happened most in the church. <laughs> you know, I listen from as a of God background. You know, in as a of God, we, we go there in the morning, we don't, we don't assign seats. But if a poor brother sits in the front, hey, come on here, come on, hey, come, come on here, go, go, go to that side. Brother, come here, come and sit down here. God bless you, brother, come and sit down here. Go, hey, hey, come on here, go, on. go, go over that side. <laughs> I would love to say, who is this baby? Who? Who is this baby? Who? Make sure no. Keep your mouth shut. Who is this baby? Who? Because that brother looks rich now. We are not here, this brother looks poor. They are the same human being. They are created the same God's image. We are, we, we are all in God's image. But you know what happened? We are all not treated equally. You know why? Because we look at one brother. This brother looks very rich. This brother has a high position in government. Maybe that guy is a thief. But we are honoring him because of his position. It shouldn't be so. Because in the eyes of God, we are all equal. We are created in God's image. May God help us in Jesus' name. Verse 26. Or oh, implication for modern Christian. This verse urges modern Christian to live at their faith actively in their daily lives. It calls for a faith that is vibrant, dynamic, and transformative, impacting both the believers and the world around them. Verse 26. As a body without spirit is dead, so faith without this is dead. You know, there are some people who say, Oh, I just serve God. I'm not going to do nothing. They are students, they don't want to study their books. I always tell my children, I say, Do not let anybody deceive you. If you don't study, you're not going to pass. I remember those when I was studying for my GC, there was this brother, not only one, a couple of them. They want to go from one crusade to another crusade in Kaduna, in Maitukuri, everywhere. They are students. 
And he said, I don't know the story. They were not story. And I know the reason why they know. I said, come and teach me. They were actually come and teach me. I'll pay them. It wasn't free. But you know what happened? When they entered the GC, they failed. They didn't pass. As we are talking today now, those people didn't have a degree. So as a Christian, we have to make sure our life is relevant. We cannot be joking about Christians and say, I'm not going to work, oh, God is my provider, I will just stay here. Ah, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. If all of us wait for a lot, where would the money come from? You know the problem we have in our countries? And I see the same problem here. Some people don't want to work. They just want to enjoy. They want to pursue the pursuit of happiness. I go to American Constitution to pursue happiness. I look at them, I feel sorry for them. Faith without works is dead. Don't let anybody deceive you. You must be hard worker and you must tend to invest in the kingdom of God. You cannot say I'm a Christian. You are not investing in God's business. You have not known Christ. God will talk to you if you truly know God. He will say, there's a pastor somewhere who needs your help. If you send him $100, that's a lot of money to that man. But to him, it may not be a lot of money. He just wanted to buy a McDonald's. Although I don't go there, I don't like to buy food. I say, that last me. I'm very, I like to cook my own food. I like, I like my wife to cook for me. I like to, wherever I go, I'm not the type of person who wants to go and eat outside. So I would like to eat a bowl. I didn't say it's a sin. Don't quote me. Don't say, ah, this man is too extreme. According to the story, she is too controversial. <laughs> so it's not me. Don't quote me. But I'm not that person like to say, go and stand at me. I'll be looking for food. I want to know what I'm eating. So faith is very, very important. So if you're a Christian, you must show love. You must not discriminate. You must get involved in God's business. All of us cannot be pastor. All of us cannot be evangelist. All of us cannot be prayer warrior. But in the, whatever area, God, wherever you are, God, God has an assignment for all of us. Don't say, eh, hey, I want to be, eh, hey, there are more than, a lot, a lot of position are there. A heavenly one, there's a lot of vacancies in the, in the heavenly business. A lot of job openings. We are looking for workers. In actual fact, the laborers are very few. We need more workers. You can pray. You can give. You can teach. You can evangelize. You can encourage. You can read. You can sing. You can dance. There are so many things you can do for God. Don't just be in the church and fold your arm and say, it's only for Pastor Marshall and Bishop uh, and for Bishop. I'm not a pastor. It's Pastor Marshall. Let's even do it. No. We are all called. And we must learn to show love. By love, people will know we are the children of who? Of God. You cannot say you are a Christian, you don't, you don't, you don't have no love. Or try to hear God will not talk to you to go and give somebody cold, cold water. Eh? <laughs> Uh, I don't know whatever you want to do go ahead though. don't quote me because Jesus said my, my sheep hear my voice the voice of a stranger they will not they will not follow is God talking to you? if God is not talking to you there is a problem oh I'm a Christian born again of course devil, devil too is born again next week I go to study chapter 3 I already started ahead of time. I, already done, I was doing the writing yesterday. And uh, <laughs> he said the devil believed to the devil believed there is God, but he doesn't, he doesn't he does not translate to nothing. Because there's no works. There is no action. Belief is nothing. Anybody can believe anything. Easy believism. Your belief, what has he done? What has he achieved? Easy believism. A lot. A lot. What, what, kind of, what kind of a lot are you expecting? If all of us just put our arm, we are waiting for a lot. Where would the lot come from? God forbid, we will never be a beggar in Jesus' name. Those who are waiting for a lot, they are going to be beggar. And their children will become beggar too. Because that's how they wait for a lot. <laughs> a lot from America. A lot. Brothers and sisters, look at your phone. 
Look at your phone right now. There should be a lot. Look at your phone. Brother Matt, have you seen the alert? Look at your phone. Dr. Fina, look at your phone. There should be a lot. Look at it. <laughs> I said, is that it? Where have you seen that in the Bible before? That is belief without works. It's not scriptural. May God help us in Jesus' name. So, James, James concludes his argument with a powerful analogy. Comparing faith without this to a lifeless body. Just as a body, just as a body needs a spirit to be alive, faith requires this or action to be genuine and effective. You cannot say a Christian, fold your arm and do nothing. Keep your mouth shut, you're not a Christian. Implication for modern day Christian. This final verse serves as a solemn reminder to modern Christians of the inseparable connection between faith and works. It underscores the necessity of living out one's faith through actions that reflect love, mercy, and justice of God in the world we are living in today. Let's all equal justice. Lots of people are poor. Lots of people are hungry. Lots of pastors need encouragement. We should never give money to those who, who claim to be rich. The Bible says, he that gives to a rich man will become poor, including politicians. I don't give my money to politicians because they are there to go and steal the money, whether here in, in, in Nigeria, anywhere. You must learn to let God speak to you to help the poor. Summary and application. James chapter 2, verse 1 to 26 challenge modern day prisoners to examine their attitude towards the wealthy and the poor and the poverty, emphasizing the importance of treating all people equally and with love. It highlights the critical relationship between genuine faith and active works, stressing that true faith produces tangible fruits in the form of compassionate deeds and righteous living. As Christians navigate their faith journey today, James teaches Sam as a call to embody God's love through practical actions, advocating for justice, serving the marginalized, and living authentically in accordance with God's will. You know that word, authentically, meaning living honestly. It's not a man you put one leg in the church, one leg outside. When you're outside, you are a good brother who is belong to the devil. When you're in the church, you are a good brother who belongs to God. You can't do that. You must be in one position. Let everybody know who you are. And you must know who you are yourself. Don't deceive yourself, ah, I'm born again. You go to nightclub where they are where they're naked in their body, you naked yourself. Where they are smoking, you smoke. Where they are drinking, you drink. Where they are cheating, you cheat. Where they are lying, you lie. Where they are fighting, you fight. Where they are fornicating, you fornicate. I am born again. When you come to church, you'll be the one that will shout the ladders. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! You say that man is drunk. <laughs> Somebody was telling me, he said, you know those others say Coke bottle? When he will say they come to church, they come with Coke bottle. He says, it's not a Coke bottle, it's alcohol. They put alcohol in the room. I say, really? Say, Pastor, go see that. This is, this is what we do. That's why everybody do your Christianity. They put Coke. When they want to turn and say, I speak in tongue. Back, 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 back. He said, nah, alcohol, they worry the person. Go and see that. Say, they say, yeah, the man don't start. He says, it's working. I say, really? He said, yeah. He said, we have seen it. We have seen it. I say, really? I say, who is deceiving who? Who is deceiving who? Go on, go on, sit down. I'm going to go ahead and put Jesus there. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, Christianity is not just about church. You are a Christian in your place of work. You are a Christian in your street. You are a Christian in your neighborhood. You are a Christian when nobody is watching you. Integrity 
is doing the right thing when nobody is watching you? Are you doing the right thing when nobody is watching you? Or are you the man that look here and look there and steal the money? I like to watch some Nigerian uh, drama on YouTube, very funny. Sometimes uh, they will draw the money on the ground, the guy will pay the money. The man will say, ah, I lost, I lost my money. The guy will say, oh, let me help you find the money. We find the money. He said, oh, I lost the money. The other guy will say, give him the money. That's the money. He said, give him the money. Which money? The one we God give to me. God give me money. He said, make a gift to the man. Give him. If that's, that's the money, you should, I see you pay the money. Give it to him. He said, who? What are you doing? Give him my shirt. Help him to look for the money. The person that took the money is helping the man to look for the money. <laughs> and after what the man will say, the other man will say, oh God, please, let me confess. This person has the money. He said, what? I don't know what he's talking about. And the man will say, well, I was actually testing. I'm looking for honest worker. Come and work for me. Are you honest? God is watching you. Tell there's no honesty. If you are if you are able to buy something for you in Nigeria, try it. If it's one naira, you tell it's two it's two it's two thousand naira. People that go to church, I'm not talking about unbelievers though. Who is deceiving who? May God help us in Jesus' name. Brothers and sisters, I don't know if you have no Christ. It's not just mere Christianity, according to St. Louis. It is beyond mere Christianity. It has to be active, powerful, and alive. If not, we are deceiving ourselves. I hope I'll come in here every Saturday. It's not just vain. Mm, that was frightening me every day. But I want to see that say, my teaching does it make any difference? I was talking to Mr. Debra at that time and said, I hope I'm not wasting my time. He said, no, 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 you're not wasting your time. I said, why? How do you know I'm not wasting my time? He said, your teaching is impacting me as a person. I said, because if what I'm saying, people are actually doing it, I should see a change. Christ's teaching is active, it's not passive. We cannot say we are Christian, we fold our arm, and our life is not transformed, it's not changed. It cannot be. Year in and year out, the God of in Jesus' name. Invitation to accept Christ. I want to extend an invitation to you. Whether you are hearing this word, and any word of all that is on the line right now, you may have been in church for a long time, but you haven't known Christ. You have never formally invited him to your heart. I invite you to give your life to Christ. One that has transformed countless lives. An invitation to embrace Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Jesus offers us love, forgiveness, and purpose beyond measure. He stands at the door of your heart, ready to enter your life and bring you peace, hope, and eternal life. Will you consider taking this step to let Jesus Christ come into your heart? It's a chance to experience freedom from the burden of sin. Find solace in his love. Embark on a journey of profound spiritual fulfillment that offers eternal life and opportunity to live with him forever. If this resonates with you, or if you have any question, I'm not asking you to appear in the church for a long time, or I don't ask you that one. Because it turns out to one, not that people are going to miss heaven, but that's not our goal. Our goal is to make people go to, go to heaven. We are not here to make anybody to go to miss heaven. That's why we stress the truth. It may be hard, may be controversial, but we have to practice it. That's where it's in practicing we get blessing. Blessing comes from doing. It's not from talking. I'm here to talk and support you in any way I can. Your spiritual journey is unique and respected. Wherever you may be along the way, Jesus Christ's resurrection is the key to eternal life. Open your heart in this amazing period to let Christ's power change your life forever. With much love and God's blessing. Brothers and sisters, I want to thank everyone of you for joining us here today. And those of us who will be hearing this word in a distant land away or reading it online to YouTube, Instagram, other social media, give your life to Christ. You know what happened? Let me tell you a secret. This world is not our home. 
You know, people pursue what I call trivial things. This does not have internal value. You know what they do? They leave the most important thing. Have you given your life to Christ? Have you known Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Are you daily reading your Bible? Are you daily telling us about Jesus? Are you daily confessing your sin? Are you daily supporting the gospel? It is you I'm talking to. Don't look at me. You are looking at, you are looking at me like that. You say, I'm not looking at you. I can't see you. Okay. You know, you know, you know, you know I'm talking to you. Go. Don't, don't, don't look at me without your, without your beautiful eyes. <laughs> We're past all can't see you. We don't know what you are talking about. Okay. Wake up then and give your life to Christ. Okay. Serve Jesus. Get involved. We need more, uh, we need more, uh, more brothers and sisters in the ministry. There are lots of things to be done. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we're stopping here today. Next week, we're taking James chapter 3. And I spent all day yesterday reading it and writing. And it was very challenging. God is calling every one of us. Are you ready to work for God? Are you ready to give your life to Christ? I invite every one of us to do that. We are going to stop here today. As the God of Israel, whom we have come to serve, who we are daily seeking, every other thing we pursue in this life, we are going to leave them behind. That is what scares me. We are going to leave everything behind. And we are pursuing things that doesn't have internal value. Oh, I have a big car, which is good. I have nothing with it. I have a big, big clothes. That is good. But are you going to take them with you? Eh, eh, eh. Pastor, don't talk of that too. I don't like that. I didn't say you are going to do that. Don't quote me. You are looking at me now with, with that your eyes. You are afraid of that because eh? <laughs> don't, don't look at me. <laughs> but I'm not seeing you. No, okay. Whatever eyes you are turning, don't turn on me. Look at this side. <laughs> God is calling you. Devote your time to God more. That's when it's going to last. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to pray today. Yeah, go ahead. St. Augustine and St. Uh, Louis. Not St. Uh, 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 Augustine and Louis. Not, not, not mere Christianity. Mere Christianity is just, oh, I'm a Christian, wear clothes, go to church on Sunday, but 
there's no practical Christianity. You are not living that Christian life. You are not concerned about anybody's problem, about their suffering, about anything. God does not touch your heart. Say, that sister, that orphan, that widow, that poor person, that pastor, remember them. God does not make you to pray for people. God does not make you to touch people's heart or to reach out to people. May God give us the grace to be sensitive to the voice of God. In Jesus' name. Sister Uche. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Before I pray, I, whoever is praying for the people who have bad days should help me to thank God. Uh, my, uh, on the fourth, that's uh, how many days ago? Two days ago. That was three days ago. Oh, congratulations. On the fourth. You know, I share that day with the uh, U.S. Okay. Right. Yes. Well, so, uh, whoever is praying for those uh, uh, celebrating bad days, you will help me thank God for another life, you know, another year. Amen. You know, I'm so grateful to God for another year at my age. Amen. Amen. He has been faithful, he has been merciful, he has shown me great mercy, and I'm so appreciative of it. Amen. Now they have me enough, but I want the brethren to help me tomorrow. I will also give thanksgiving in the church. Amen. Because every year is a, is a big plus for me. Yes. For what I've gone through health wise. Any any bad day is a big is a big celebration in my heart. I may not cook rice. I may not buy mineral or cook malt to give to people. But they 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 are the the thanks the thanks I had the appreciation I have in my heart towards God for sparing my life another year. Amen. Uh, I express it. But God knows my heart. Amen. And I'm very grateful to Him for His grace, for His mercy. Amen. So that's my testimony. Hallelujah. We thank God for that. Go ahead and pray. Yes, go ahead and pray. Thank you, Lord, for another day in your presence. Yes, Lord. Thank you for this message today. Study on James chapter 2. Father in heaven, I pray for each and every one of us, as especially as we gather every Saturday to hear your word. Father in heaven, I pray, Lord, that as many of us as have professed to believe in you, that have given our lives to serve you, Father, help us to be true to our confession. Amen. Help O Lord, that as we have professed to be Christians, that we should be Christians indeed. Amen. O Lord, o Lord, that as we dress up like tomorrow, we we'll dress up to go to church. Around us, people will see us and know us as Christians. That it is not only by mouth, but that we do not pretend to be children of God. But Lord, we should be people that should be seen as children of God. Amen. By our actions, Lord. Not only really by our words, but by our actions, by our deeds. People should feel our presence. People should feel our love. Father and our God, we are praying. Many people in the church, while they are maybe doing fundraise, they say, let those who are rich, let them be given money, I don't have money. But Lord, I have come to learn that it is not only money that we can give in the house of God. Yes. It is not only money. We, we, we can give our services. Like the pastor has taught us now, that it, in the house of God there is a lot of, there are plenty of vacancies. There is enough to accommodate everybody. Yes. Those who have the money, so look at 
sweep the church, they can sweep. Yes. Those who can clean the, uh, the, clean the shares. Those who, 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 who take care of children in children's church, carrying the children as they are crying, they will be doing that. It is not everybody that will carry the Bible and be preaching. Not everybody will climb the pulpit. Not everybody that will be a song leader or to be sing in the choir. But Lord, there is always a position for everybody. Father, help us to occupy in your presence. Amen. Help us to occupy children of God, wherever we find ourselves. Father, I don't to say that I can't speak English. I don't hear English, and so I cannot speak. I didn't go to school, and so I cannot read. Father, there is if, even my mother that didn't go to school. Was able, you granted her the grace to store your word that she was hearing, the, the word, she, what she was hearing in her head and in her heart, and yet she was preaching to people. Yes. She couldn't read the Bible right. But the message that she had, you helped her to store the message in her heart and in her head. She was able to preach. During evangelism, she would go out, she would preach to people. And yet she couldn't read the Bible. It was only what she heard. And you empowered, the, 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 empowered her to be able to store what she heard and use it. That shows that in your house, nobody is useless. Father, help us to help that we can be whatever we want to be in your presence. Yes, Lord. Father, help us, O Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. Father, us, we have started this race. We have started this race. The beginning of the race is not the, the most important, Lord. It is the end of it. Yes. Because so many people will start a race. Like the marathon, they start the race. But along the road, along the way, so many people will be dropping by the wayside. It is only very few that will end. Father, help us. Yes, Lord. Be among the few that will end this race. Amen. 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 Father, help us that we will not be say, ah, we started. And then we will begin to say, ah, this journey is too, taking too long. Ah, it's too worrisome. We cannot continue and we drop by the wayside. Father, Lord, forbid it in the name of Jesus. Amen. That's finishing. Father, help us, O Lord. I commit our pastor into your hands, O Lord. Father, it is not an easy task to undertake to be a pastor. As a, as a person, even as a Christian, I dreaded marrying a pastor. I said, ah, I have not been, I have not been able to read the Bible for myself. Pray enough for myself. And now I will undertake to go and be reading the Bible to feed the whole flock that will gather and depend on the Bible I read and the one I, 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 I know to come and teach them. Or the prayer that I will pray for them. Father in heaven, but this is a man, somebody that has given himself to walk in your vineyard as a pastor. Yes, Father in heaven, this is abundant grace, abundant grace, enough grace to continue. Amen. Father, so that whatever he tells us, he also lives by it. Amen. And he will do another. He will not advise us to live the right way, and behind you will be living the wrong way. Amen. Father, I help that you will strengthen him. Yes, Lord. And you will in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The wife, as I dreaded being a pastor's wife because of the responsibility, no pastor approached me for marriage, but I was trying, I was imagining it. I said, ah, this job is no, it's a no muscle. Those who say they want to open church, they don't know the, the, what is involved. Yes. That people, that people's spiritual lives are involved. Before you say God called you and you open a church, you must know what you want, you are, the, the task, the responsibility you are putting on your head. That 
a lot of people's spiritual lives will be dependent upon your, upon 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 you, feeding them as 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 as, as, a, as a pastor. And so I pray for my sister Frank, mm-hmm. as she is a pastor's wife. It is not easy. Grant her the grace. Yes, Lord. The grace for wives. Mm-hmm. Make it available. On that top on her. Yes, Lord. Amen. Yes. Amen. Father in heaven, grant her grace to pray. I know that pastors pray a lot. Their wives pray even more. Father, grant her the grace to live as a pastor's wife. Yes, Lord. A worthy pastor in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. There's the water of the God ministry that at the end they will finish this race well. In the mighty name of Amen. I saw for all the bishops and the pastors in this group, one Bishop Wadia and the wife, I can read them into your hands as well. Yes, Lord. Because in their own corners, they are also ministering to people. At a, mm. Some time ago, he traveled to Nigeria and they traveled to places for ministry, for missionary work. Father in heaven, I pray, O oh Lord, for such people, Lord, as they travel, as they walk, as they minister, make them fruitful. Amen. As they minister to people, Lord, minister to them. Amen. As they preach people into the kingdom of God, they will not be a cast away. Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. For all of us, O oh Lord, we are all ministers. Now, all right. Yes. As we evangelize, as we witness, as we tell people about Christ, some of them repent. Father in heaven, I pray that as we meet, as we bring people into the kingdom, we will not be thrown out one day. Amen. 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 Help us to end our journey well, to Amen. end it well. Amen. We will all receive. Welcome, my faithful servants. Yes, Jesus. Amen. Today's, today's lesson. Okay. Help us to see everyone as a child of God. No, whether, no matter whether they have money or they don't have money. Yes, whether they want to do or they are illiterate. Whoever they are, O oh Lord, whether they are black or they are white. Father, whether they are Africans, or they are Western people. Our Father in heaven, I pray, Lord, that you help us to see every child of God as a real priesthood. Yes. In the mighty name Jesus. Amen. Bless every heart. Bless this word that we have heard, O Lord, that we should do to guide us every day. That yes. our lives will be at peace. We begin to appreciate people in our midst. Oh. And not begin to categorize, categorize, begin to uh, see this one does not belong to my class. Mm-hmm. Didn't go to school, cannot hear my language. Our Lord and our God, I pray that this does not take place in the house of God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, Brahmas, I want you to pray for this country and Nigeria. America is facing a very serious time. There is lack of love in this land. There is so much discrimination, so much hatred, political hatred, economic hatred, and even t- is trending toward violence. And this is because they are Christian. And that's why the church population is dropping. There is no love in the church. The church population is dropping. In the 60s and 70s, America used to be 70, 80% church attendance. Today, it's less than 25%. I check it all the time, and uh, the population is dropping. And my fear is that a day is going to come. Nobody will go to church in this country, and that, that is my fear. And I'm not, I don't think anybody will go to church. The question is, do they know Christ? Are they practicing love? That will ask God to do. May God help us in Jesus' name. That is what we saw today. It will be, it will be, it will be relevant in the heart of all Christians. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Father, I pray for you. Thank you. Praise you. In 
thank you, Abba Father, that the world we live in today is, uh, uh, is uh, not as we intended it for it to be. We see different activities happening, you know, you know, those uh, movement, man, man of the world, changing groups, you know, men, you know, loving men, women, loving women. That was not the intention for mankind. Yes. But I was a bit, you know, that you, you know, uh, all this that has happened to God, Father, Lord, we ask you, God, Father, that you uh, give us the heart to be a, gen a gentle God, Father, for your kingdom, that we will be able to, you know, uh, speak the truth, you know, and not be worried about what we see around us. We know the activities so God Father today, you know, happen here even when we are still, you know, you know, we see the rich, the people wait, the equity we get, we see people, you know, turn against others for political reasons, for personal reasons, for whatever reasons they have. But I God, we ask the Lord Father that we would not, you know, um, be a uh, caught, um, we will not be caught in this mist of what is going on, but rather let us have your fear in our heart. According to your word, the book of uh, First Corinthians 13, says, This things we must, you know, know. These are great things. He says, This faith, hope, and the greatest of all. It's love. Help us to show love, oh God, Father. Yes, Lord. Help us to remember, oh God, Father, that we will treat our brothers and sisters as we want to be treated. That your love will not surpass every hate, oh God, Father. That in the midst of this, you know, situation right now that we are facing, even both in the United States, the United States and then go back home in Nigeria, you know, that your word, your faith, oh God, Father, that will keep, you know, us alive. Yes, Lord. To continue to hope in you, oh God, Father, that we will not lose directions, oh God, Father, because, you know, we are this world. Father, Lord, help us, oh God, Father. We know that we saw, but let us not be, you know, as the world, you know, perceive us, or rather, Give us that you know, strength of our Father to live for you, yes. to do your will. Yes, Let your will be done in our lives, of your Father. In the name of Jesus, we ask you to go for our lives for our, our, our children, particularly our young ones, you know, that to give them the strength of our Father to, to stand against any you know, pressure. Yes, you know, Father. Yes, it will be evil. But we ask you, know, Father. We ask you, know, Father, let every place, every, you know, temple that I will raise for this evil doings, for this evil worshiping. Father, may not come here at the end of the dwelling of our children, Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Help us, Father, by your power to live righteously. Father, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord. We ask, oh, Father, Lord, that with this city, that we will be like a city without limit, that none of this, you know, atrocities will limit us, so, oh, Father. Because of what we see with our eyes, oh, God, Father, we ask, oh, God, Father. Then it's only me also, God Father. In the name of Jesus. Amen. That your love for us, oh God Father, will continue to uplift us. That your word says, oh God Father, you will deliver us, oh God Father. You will deliver us, oh God Father. Yes, Lord. As of our head. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Amen. That your love, oh God Father, will not die. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Father, to live for you, 
that as we grow as daily and go before us, we go with the hands of the Father. On our left side, on our right hand, we will be with us in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 In fact, help us to finish and finish strong yes. in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let uh, Mama Frank I pray for all the all people that have a bad day, our children and our beloved sister Richie in Nigeria, that God has added one more year to her life. Very lovely. In those days we were little young boys and girls now, we are senior citizens. That God give us more grace to live for Him and be an example of believers in Jesus' name. Father, we are grateful for bringing this 
children into our life to go. We are grateful for bringing these people into our life and into our company. Father, words are not enough to press our thanksgiving. For the daily miracles you have been accomplishing in their lives, oh God. Father, we say thank you. Thank you. For their future that is glorious in you. In this land of the faith, Father, thank you for the good not die prematurely in the name of Jesus. They will not put that spiritually. They will not die physically. They will not die financially. They will not die emotionally. In the name of Jesus. Father, give them your grace. And this day, at the turn of each day, oh God, they will have the reason to praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want the bishop to pray for us and to bless every one of us as a father that we will not just be the hearer. It's very easy to hear the word of God. And people say, well, I, love, I love that pastor, the preaching was very I said, What did he preach? What was it that made it to be good? Oh, it was good, I don't know, but it was very good. Tell me something you learned. I like to ask people that question, but they didn't learn nothing. They were carried away by the emotion. That we actually paid the tour. We need a lot of people in the gospel. We need supporters, we need financial, we need prayer warriors, as is how she said, we need people to sweep the church, we need people to just encourage, we need people to write, we need people to call. You don't have to, it's money is not everything. You can write, brother, I pray for you. People write to me every day. Somebody wrote to me this early morning. Somebody wrote to me yesterday from Nigeria, other part of the world. Pastor, thank you very much for this teaching. It really touched my heart. I ask that God give me the grace to live by it. That's an encouragement. What are you doing? What are you doing as a Christian? Are you encouraging somebody? You know, as I said to be a pastor, it's very tough. That's why I talk about Bishop every day. I know what he has gone through as a, as a pastor. That's every time we pray for him, we want to try to do everything to encourage him and of his humility. I know other people here who are not even nothing. They don't want, they say, I cannot join you in this Bible study. As I say, when, when mosquito bite them, they will run to my house. I laugh. I say, who is this city who may God help us in Jesus' name? Let Bishop pray for us. And may God give us the grace to support him as a man of God. He needs our support. He needs our you know, support in, in many ways. He needs our prayer. He needs our financial support. He needs our word of encouragement. If God touch your heart to support him, let me know. I'll give you this information. You can send to him. Don't send it to me. I will say, don't send me any money you send to anybody. I'll give you the information. Send it to them. But if you cannot send it to them, give it to me. I will send it to them. Let people know you're the one I send. Not me. Because I don't want to take your credit. May God help us in Jesus. Let Bishop pray for us as a father and make us to be grateful like him and to live for God. In Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. We thank you for our 
also. We thank you for everyone on the platform. We thank you for those that may be here online. Father, yes, we ask so. your blessing. We ask your grace. We ask your mercy upon each and every one of us. We ask your anointing upon each and every one of us. We have your we ask for your empowerment to do your will and to live for you. Yes, Lord. And Lord, the word we hear, Lord, will not be a judgment unto us or against us, but rather a blessing that will usher us into your kingdom. Having done well, having run the race successfully here on earth, we shall have a year in London, that good and faithful servant. Thank you, Holy Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord your word each day. Yes, and first Lord. Lord to be sensitive to your Holy Spirit guidance and direction. Yes. We are with do the which you are commanding us to do. Thank you, Father, we give you praise. Help us, O Lord, to be humble and to be faithful to you at all times. Bless, O Lord, this word we have heard. Thank you. Bless you to our Lord. Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Father, I want to bless you for Bishop and for the Sister Elizabeth. You will say, Healing is the children's bread. He says, Send forth his word and heal them of all their diseases. Father, as Jesus' representative, I stand in the gap. I say, Sister Elizabeth, you are made whole by the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus make you whole. The blood of Jesus can make you whole. The Bible says, no divination against Israel, no enchantment against Jacob. Every divination enchantment against you will turn into the council of Ahitophel, will turn into foolishness. The Bible says, this is the temple of God. It says, anything that destroys this temple of God, God will destroy. Sickness is a name. It says, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. We command you to be made whole right now by the blood of Jesus Christ. Every person that is sick in this group, Lord, your word says, healing is your bread. We, we command healing to flow through us, every one of us, and for his grace to be reached towards us all in Jesus' name. He said, When I see the blood, when I see the blood, when I see the blood, I will pass over. I apply the blood to every person here today for this hour with the Lord. I say, You are blessed, you are made whole by the blood of Jesus, the girl of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the father of Israel, Jesus. I bless you, enlarge your course, and bless you mightily in Jesus' name. God bless everyone of you. Stay happy, happy birthday. I think if you should be able to buy Fanta. Happy birthday <laughs> to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Love you, Sister Uche, and enjoy a happy birthday to every one of you. And we ask, and we ask God of Israel to enlarge your course and increase your years in Jesus' name. Happy birthday.